Spring Grace Valley Church, um, good to see you all. I hope you have a great week. Let us worship together. I'm going to read Acts chapter 21, 27 to 36. 27 to 36. When the seven days were nearly over, some Jews from the province of Asia saw Paul at the temple. They stirred up the whole crowd and seized him shouting, Fellow Israelites, help us. This is the man who teaches everyone everywhere against our people and our law and this place. And besides, he has brought Greeks into the temple and defiled this holy place. They had previously seen Trophimus, the Ephesians, in their city with Paul, and assumed that Paul had brought him into the temple. The whole city was arose, and the people came running from all directions. Seizing Paul, they dragged him from the temple, and immediately the gates were shut. While they were trying to kill him, news re reached the commands of the Roman troops that the whole city of Jerusalem was in an uproar. He at once took some officers and soldiers and ran down to the crowd. When the rioters saw the commander and his soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. The commander came up and arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. Then he asked who he was and what he had done. Some in the crowd shouted one thing, some another. And since the commander could not get at the truth because of the uproar, he ordered that Paul be taken into the barracks. When Paul reached the, the staff, the violence of the mob mob uh, was so great he had to be carried by the soldiers the crowds that followed the cap shouting get rid of him let us pray heavenly father this wonderful word of god give us just give uh, your word and uh, be with us just with the spirit in jesus name i pray amen the 2020 Olympics uh, are taking place in Tokyo right now. Due to the COVID-19, uh, 2020 Olympics was uh, delayed one year. But the, whole, uh, the world best athletes are struggling, struggling in Tokyo's sweltering heat. And because of COVID-19, it's now under control in Tokyo. Despite their struggles, as we watch and hear about these athletes uh, participating in the Olympics, we naturally think about their passion, commitment, and discipline to be the, uh, the world's best in their field. Most of them have been trained since they were little uh, and sacrificed a lot to focus on their sports and discipline themselves to strive to be the world best athletes. It's something you can't possibly do without passion. Passion is very important because it is the energy and driving force in a person. Passion is different from desire. Desire and in instinct uh, to pursue pleasure Wherever passion is the pursuit of meaningful and accomplishment or fulfillment in life. Without passion in life, you cannot live a successful, beautiful life as a Christian. Do you know depression is a common and serious illness and negatively affects how one feels and the way one thinks and acts? Depression causes a feeling of the sadness and or loss of interest in things 
or activities you once enjoyed. Behind many shooting incidents and suicide, we often discover a story of depression. It concerns me that nowadays many people, especially many young people, suffer depression and experience the symptoms of insomnia, lack of motivation, and lethargy, and feelings of worthlessness or guilt. Unfortunately, even Christians sometimes experience depression and especially a lack of motivation. This happens when we lose our passion for Christ and the kingdom of God. If we lose our passion for Christ and the kingdom of God, we spend our time, energy, and resources elsewhere, and our life ended up to waste it. I'm sorry about to say wasted, but that is true. That is, uh, we'll, you know, we, we will harvest, we, 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 uh, our energy and resources we spend in some other, you know, place. Thus, passion is important in order to live a beautiful, purposeful, fulfilled life as a Christian. When we look at the people God used, they are people of the clean hearts, humility, and passion. I ask you, brothers and sisters, do you have a passion? This is the age of frustration, the age of loss, and the age of powerlessness. Today in our modern society of a huge social economic system, an individual seems so powerless and helpless. Moreover, people lose confidence and passion while pursuing achievement, success, wealth when they don't attain worldly success. When people lose a passion for life, they are not motivated to do anything. Life becomes meaningless and boring. There are many people who live meaningless and boring lives without passion. Even some Christians are affected by this kind of lethargy. If we truly follow Christ, we cannot live such a meaningless life. Our faith is our passion for Christ and kingdom and His holy work. When we truly know that your life is saved by Jesus and you want to give all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. If you don't have that heart and passion, you have a problem with your faith. The message given to us today uh, through the today text is have passion, recover passion. But passion must be directed to God. Passion is important, uh, but misdirected passion may cause serious problems. Misdirected passion can be as bad as or sometimes worse than the lack of passion. Misdirected passion can be like a sword, not in the scaffold. It can cut damage and cause a lot of hurts and pain, not only in one's own life, but also in the lives of those around him. In other words, misdirected passion can cause destruction and damage instead of building up and producing good fruits. The Jews in today's passage are a good example of a misdirected passion. They are very passionate. Their passion was not even for their fleshly desires or pleasures, pleasure, but for their, for their religion. Their passion was for keeping and pro uh, pr protecting their religion, but their passion resulted in them almost killing a people and destroying the kingdom of God. How could this be? The Jews also love God and want the kingdom of God to be established on this earth. But how could their passion be so misdirected that they went against God's will and His kingdom? He can 
we can make the same mistakes in this age. So let's find out what went wrong. Then we must examine our passion. We need to examine our passion for the church, our passion for the ministry, our passion for the family, and our passion for the work. Let's take a look at how their passion was misdirected. First, their passion was based on anger and a victim mentality. Let us read at, uh, verse 28. Shouting, fellow Israelites, help us. This is the man who teaches everywhere, everyone everywhere against our people and our law and displays. And besides, he has brought Greeks into the temple and defiled this holy place. The Jews from the province of Asia were shouting out of their anger that Paul was the offender and they were uh, the victims. Anger and a victim mentality can never go in the right direction. But when they are, uh, they are combined uh, with passion, they fly off in the wrong direction. Anger leads to destruction and violence. Victim mentality results in the being defensive and calls out for sympathy. Thus, when passion is combined with anger and a victim mentality, the passion stirs up destruction. Passion is a power to create, but combined with anger and victim mentality, it turns into a power to destroy. Second, their passion was not based on the truth. And besides, he has brought Greeks into the temple and defiled this holy place. They had previously seen Trophimus, the Ephesians, in the city with Paul and assumed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Jews previously saw Paul was with Trophimus, who was a Greek from the Ephesians in the city. So when they saw Paul in the temple, Jewish court, they, they thought he had brought this Greek companion to the temple. But Paul was in the temple to fulfill the Nazarite's ordinances. Luke cl uh, clarified that the Jews assumed wrongly. When passion leads to action based on the rumors or assumptions without checking the fact, it turns into the big disaster. Passion not based, uh, based on the truth may start great, but sooner or later it, it, it will lose its momentum, momentum and dis disappear leaving those who are involved with a disappointment. Passion should impress and encourage the people, but this kind of passion without truth deceived and disappointed people. They were the ignoring the right uh, procedures and acting unlawfully. The third point, uh, at the time, Jews under the Roman rule uh, did not have the legal right to the kill to kill people, uh, uh, and it was the authority of the Roman governor to inflict a capital punishment. That is why the Jewish leaders uh, pleaded to the Roman governor, uh, Pil Pilate, who executed Jesus on the cross because Jesus had become well known and popular and they were afraid of violating Roman law by executing Jesus on their own. But on the other hand, as the deacon Stephen was uh, relatively unknown, the Jews probably thought that stoning Stephen uh, was not likely to attract any attention from the Rome and took the matter into their own handle illegally. Even in the today's passage, just 
uh, like at the time of stoning Stephen, uh, the Jews dragged Paul from the temple and tried to kill him even though they had no right to kill anyone. Especially in Roman citizens like Paul, there is an unbelie unbelievably great enthusiasm and energy driving the, uh, driving the crowd to taking the risk to go against what is unlawful. Uh, verse 31 records uh, that the whole city of Jerusalem was in an, an uproar. That is why the news reached the, the command of Roman troops and the, he, uh, he and soldiers ran to the crowd or uh, because the crowd was too wild and uh, they had to bind the pole with a two chain and put him into the barracks and transport him to the Roman soldiers camp. Passion is a tremendous energy, but when passion defies law and order, it, order, it, it causes disturbance and chaos and destroys a relationship. It is a misdirected and distorted passion. That kind of passion will lead a life to have full of bitter fruits. Why did the Jews show the such a misdirected passion. There were the people who received God's laws and who wanted to live according to the God's words. Their passion seems like a passion for God, but in fact their passion was for themselves, depending themselves and their position, expressing their own emotion and protecting their hidden self-righteousness. Passion for self is a self-defense. Thus, passion for self constantly blames those who are around us, saying, they don't help me, they don't recognize me, I'm trying to be good, but that's why I keep failing. Passion for self is self-centered, so your own emotion is more important than others emotion and even more important than the truth thus even unfounded s stories are regarded as true as long as the stories appeal to your own feelings passion for self pursuit self-righteousness as you place yourself above common sense and the laws you think your thoughts and judgments are higher than the law, doing what is unlawful without feeling conscientious. This world tries to take our passion away and put us into lethargy, lethargy and depression. We must restore our passion, but more importantly, our passion must be headed in the right direction for the right purpose. What is our passion for? Where is our passion headed? We are in the constantly battle about whether to direct our passion to God and ourselves. We may have experienced starting out with our passion directed for God, uh, toward God. But one day, we ended up discovering ourselves instead of God. As soon as we find our passion, pursuing ourselves, we must lay down ourselves and redirect our passion to God. That is an endless battle in the life of faith on the earth. Therefore, we must have passion. If we have lost our passion, we must restore it. If we have a passion, we must examine what it is for and where it is directed. Because if it is misdirected, it can cause serious damage. Passion for God. Passion for Christ. It's important. It is today's passage. Message. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, energize, rekindle, the heart of Jesus Christ 
in each of us here. And all modern day Christians live in this mechanical and systemized society so that we may tru truly live for you. Help us see when our passion follow toward ourselves. Redirect our passion to you, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to read a question for meditation first. Why did the Jews get excited and try to kill Paul as soon as they saw him? Why was their passion misdirected? Second, do you have a passion? If yes, who or what is it for and where is it directed? If not, how can you restore your passion? Third, what are the three characteristics of a misdirected passion in the Jew? Do we show any of these characteristics? If yes, when do we show these characteristics and how can we, how can we change? I'm going to bless you. May the grace of Jesus Christ, love of the Father, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you now and forever. Have a great week. Hope you have a um, um, wonderful week. And then I want to see you at church. Bye.